Hi, my name is Alistair Purbrick, fourth generation winemaker at Tabilk in central Victoria. I would like to introduce you to Australia's first families of wine, a collection of 12 of Australia's best known wineries representing the very heart and soul of the modern Australian wine industry. We come from all corners of the country and together have more than 1200 years of winemaking experience. We believe we are the custodians of some of the finest vineyards this country has to offer and make wines that reflect our love of the land and our sense of place. The following video provides a few insights into the wines we make, the people who make up our 12 families and the lives we lead. Enjoy. The Henske family came to be here in Eden Valley basically because of religious persecution. Uh, Johann Christian Henske arrived here in 1841 um, settled initially up at Lobethal, bought this property out here in about 1860, then slowly moved out here, built the winery and the, the house and planted the vineyard and here we are today. I guess being together for so long really means that we've, we've shared a lot of the learning and the doing, the creating together, and it makes a pretty, pretty good team, I reckon. What it means to become the sixth generation is uh, continuing the legacy that mum and dad have certainly um, carried on. Uh, working with my father, uh, it's, it's good and bad, presents lots of, lots of different opportunities. It's, I feel a bit like, uh, I get asked that question a bit, um, it's a bit like the aftermatch function when you're captain in a footy team, you have to say nice things about the enemy. I think exactly the same problems I had working with my father, I've got some empathy with it. The Hunter is one of those, the great area because we are unique and different and we're, we're lighter to medium bodied and we're spicy and we're savoury and the wines are based on acid rather than tannin and they live. Semillon's the white variety that we do in the Hunter that nobody else in the world can do as well. And, uh, and about 20 odd years ago <clears throat> I suddenly realised that we had the opportunity to work with something that was totally unique. I feel very lucky to um, be part of the Mount Pleasant uh, legacy, if you want to call it that. The, this place has heritage and uh, you know, right behind us, the old hill up there has vines uh, planted in 1880. Morris was a, an icon winemaker and probably one of the best the world will ever see. And so for the McWilliams family, my family, to generate the Morris O'Shea Award in his honour is uh, it's a wonderful thing for, for um, my family to be part of and it's a wonderful thing, wonderful thing for the wine industry. My family's first involvement with Tabilk was back in 1875 when my great-grandfather's third cousin, James Purbrick, excavated the 1875 cellar, or as we call it, the new cellar. For us at Tabilk, part of that evolution has been the establishment of our uh, ecotourism operation, uh, which in essence has been the development of about a thousand acres of wetlands and wildlife reserve. We've got the oldest Marsan vines in the world here, which were planted in 1927, and we've got the largest single acreage of Marsan in the world with just under 100 acres. So it's got some really significant points of difference. Out of a lot of, the, you know, with a place 160 years old, a lot of the traditions go and we felt Coopering is one that's worth maintaining um, and we think it's a noble tradition of, of wine making, you know, it's a unique art. It's the only privately owned cooperage on a winery in the Southern Hemisphere. Uh, we make all of our top end barrels uh, for our reds and whites out of uh, American oak and various forests or oak from various forests in France. Rutherglen Musket is a very important um, wine to the Australian wine industry. In fact, we're very happy to be able to say that it's probably one of the most highly regarded products that come out of Australia. The things that make Rutherglen special are our climate. Uh, Rutherglen has a, normally a very dry ripening period which allows us to leave the grapes on the vine, let them shrivel so that the bunches, uh, by the time they're picking, might have, say, 40-50% of raisins on them and that allows us then to make a very sweet, very luscious wine. Well this is what life's all about isn't it? Uh, to be <coughs> a family with the um, me, uh, all my boys and girls around me and then all these lovely grandchildren. It's, uh, it's part of uh, the, the thought of a family company, you see, it's the family, 
extension and uh, it, this is so important and then when you're down at the winery uh, to have those days that you'll never forget in luncheons with all the team in and talking about what, whatever the situation that we have. Well, um, we've had the traditional wines like Chardonnay, Cabernet, Shiraz, Merlot, but our most recent developments have been the new grape varieties and, and wines like Vermentino, uh, Siena, uh, Moscato, Dolcetto, and, and varieties that we've really pioneered. And uh, most recently, Pinot Grigio has become very successful as well. And, and talking about the new, possibly uh, the, the other end of the spectrum from where we're standing today is your kindergarten operation, uh, where I believe you develop new wines and new varietals. It's really important to have a, a place where you can play around with different varieties that doesn't interfere with the main production. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you've got little bits and pieces of grapes coming in of new varieties or with trials from vineyards, then they get put aside for half a day while you do your main production, they spoil and you've lost that year's experience. I find it really exciting because as a family we're able to create this from the beginning. I mean the site was a, a gisted horse uh, farm years ago and it was not really, you know, looked at as vineyard land when we looked at it first off. 2006, we didn't make any, any Howard Park Reds. Uh, it was a late vintage, uh, the grapes were still sound, but then um, the, fin you know, the vintage closed out, started raining like today. We've got a lot of loyal customers with their Howard Park Cabernet. To make a green and mean Cabernet would have been very detrimental, so that was a real painful blow financially. Well, you see, it's our reputation, so right. why bottle something that you're really not confident about? Uh, we have about uh, five or 550 acres of vineyards and 200 acres of vacant land for these guys to grow into and plant more vineyards as they evolve and uh, we evolve. We're, we're absolutely devoted and passionate about Riesling. We're, we grow it on different soil types and we get the flavours from different soils, whether it be limestone or slate or rock, and then uh, we make wine and then we can blend all these parcels together to make a more complex wine. Then um, you've only, you taste a, a glass of clear wine and you say, where is this from? Where is this Riesling from in the world? All the families involved in the, in the wine business, uh, my uh, sister and her husband run the Yarra Valley operation. Um, youngest of the family, Victor, looks after our exports. And uh, middle brother, Kevin, looks after the vineyards around the Riverina. It started off with the grandparents and was passed on through to us and we've, we've just had that feeling that the family has to stay in it. They haven't been able to get out of it one way or another. <laughs> <laughs> well, but it is, it, it's very, very important yeah. and there's no other word to explain it. Yeah. I think it's actually important to really understand what the family does bring to a winery if it's four generations like Darenberg then we, we basically have a continuum of technique in a way. We still use all the same old open fermenters, we just copied them and turned them into stainless steel little five tonne fermenters. And it takes a long time to understand the vineyard and really make, the, really get the best out of that vineyard. And so we returned all of the vineyards back to the old way. And we're very proud of the wines we make. I'm incredibly proud of what Chester's done because uh, after he came home, we modernised the winery, had all the latest technology, all the 101 things you can do and of course there's always improvements going in in the research in wine industry and when you apply those to the old-fashioned techniques that we still use then you can produce some lovely wines and they're very unique wines, they're different wines and that's the family uh, part of it. I can imagine how my father felt you know when he introduced me to his contemporaries to say that I was coming into the wine business I didn't realise how proud it would have made him until I have that situation happening to me today. The family businesses are where innovation will come and and we've got to be the face, we've got to come back Australia's to be what Australians are, open, friendly, have a bit of fun but do things better than everyone else. The first family is a wine is a really important part of of preserving that, that sort of history, of the family history of Australia and to have a commonality between a whole group of old multi-generational families and to join the force together it makes us really powerful. Well I think you know this, this coterie of like-minded um, family makers of wine have got a terrific opportunity. Um, we've all got plenty of uh, experience in the wine game over many generations so I don't think anyone should assume the title of being the leader or the custodian. I think we're all there looking after each other to be honest. Wine is in our blood and 
Uh, we've sort of grown up with it. That's, that's all we know and we live it and breathe it and love it.